Welcome to August 15th, the second work day of the week, the day that we shall call a Monday. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. A year to keep your eyes on heaven. Day 216 of the year 2011. Our study today is about when we reject our purpose. When we reject our purpose. Brethren, again I suggest you write down on a pad and paper the chapter and verse so that you can go back and study the whole context out of your own Bible and get the whole meaning of what we're trying to get, give you. You can use the pause button down here in the corner, brethren, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your Bible and read the chapter and verse right along with us. Well, with that, let's get right on over into when we reject our purpose. To do that, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 through 10. Also in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. We're going to start reading a verse in Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. I spent 30 years in business world when I should have been sharing God's word with others. I believe the Lord called me to share his word with others as a boy in high school, but because of fear and doubt and opposition, I instead set out to create my own future. Throughout my time in business, I often felt God was prodding me to accept the plans that he had for me, but for a number of reasons, I continued to turn a deaf ear. I finally believed the Lord and left the world of business in a leap of faith, trusting that, that he would take care of my family and me. He has not let me down. Today I often wonder what blessings I forfeited by rejecting the Lord's call on my life at a young age. What books was I supposed to write while I was busy making my own plans? What great things did he have in mind for me when I was skipping along on the road, wrong road? It is not something to dwell on, but it is something to think about from time to time. Though my rebellion was subtle, one born more from doubt and fear than willful disobedience. I am well aware that there are things I have missed out of because of it, and that thought makes me sad. Every day I see people that I believe are rejecting God's call on their lives. I know one man who pastors a church, yet he should be teaching in a university. When I shared this thought with him, he said with a smile, you would not believe how many people have told me that. Then he explained to me that as a boy, he always envisioned himself as a college professor. He acknowledges that his talents are better suited for the world of academics than for pastoring a church. Yet somehow, he continues in his job. It is so clear that God has other plans for his future, yet he refuses to embrace them. God fills his plans in spite of our rebellion. Someone else wrote in the studies of God's word that he wanted me to share with others during my years in business. Other professors are teaching the class that God had in mind for my pastor friend. In Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10, 
everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish, God says through his prophet Isaiah. It is not that God is not powerful enough to get his will accomplished. It just saddens him to see his children reject the divine calling. And we may never know what blessings we forfeited by failing to embrace God's purpose for us. What do you sense God's plan are for your future? Pray and ask him to reveal his true purpose for you. Listen to the blessed invitation in John chapter 6 and verse 37. Him that is coming to me, I will in no wise cast out. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, the tradition of men is to get ahead and grab all the stuff that you can in this world. That's tradition of men. But God wants you to watch over his flock. You may not be a teacher. You might not be a pastor. You might not go to the college and teach there in academics. But if there are in other ways. The Bible tells us that he tells us that we are made up of many parts. Each to do our thing. And if we don't do our thing, it leaves it to another part to handle it for us. Well, brethren, if you want to follow the Lord and do His will and help Him out, get down on the knees and repent. Repent, repent, repent of following the tradition of men. Ask the Father what He would have you do for Him. Brethren, while you're on your knees asking for forgiveness for following the tradition of men, ask him also for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the letter he sent to you, and that letter is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.